Hello there everyone, UXW Bill here with you once again, and today I'm shooting a little bit of a test video. As some of you may be aware, my video editing process was unexpectedly sidelined by some failures involving the hardware of my MacBook laptop computer. And so, after taking some time off to regroup and refigure how I was going to edit and upload videos, I switched to using AVS Video Editor on my trusty old Dell Dimension 8300 personal computer. I thought it was working so well, but you know how that old saying goes, if everything seems to be going well, <laughs> then you've obviously overlooked something. And apparently I had, because fellow YouTuber V Westlife pointed out in uh, a comment on the video immediately prior to this one, my most uh, current upload prior to this one, that there was a border around the video. Well, even though there's like two or three videos that have that problem, somehow I never noticed it. So what I've got for you today is a little bit of a test video, but we're going to have some productive content as part of this test video. I know there are some of you who watch my channel and are enthusiasts or appreciative of older refrigeration equipment, especially that which is manufactured to a much higher quality standard as compared to anything you can buy today. And so it is that today I'm going to tell you all about this Oasis, a product of EBCO, 30 pint automatic frost-free dehumidifier. You see, it's my carefully considered opinion that modern dehumidifiers, they're just absolutely horrible pieces of crap. If they're not catching on fire or having their plastic cabinets shatter or melt, then the refrigerant is leaking out of them. And it seems to me that you could still buy a decent dehumidifier as recently as the mid to late 1990s. I know there's a Magic Chef model that was very popular. Now, for those of you who are unfamiliar with the Oasis name, they've been around for a long time, but most people would better know them as a manufacturer of water handling equipment like water coolers, water fountains, and things along those lines. But for a while, anyway, they did make dehumidifiers. And I was all set to tell all of you that I think I had found a modern dehumidifier that was not a complete piece of crap because it looked like Oasis was still manufacturing these. And if you've got a couple hundred bucks, there is somebody that has stock of them on Amazon.com. But unfortunately, I'm not sure if Oasis is really in business anymore, although their website is online. And while they show a dehumidifier in their catalog, well... I couldn't find it for sale outside of that seller on Amazon.com. And even though it would be nice in this day and age to be able to buy a high quality automatic dehumidifier such as this one, well, unfortunately, I think that time has passed. So let's go ahead and take a closer look at this unit. There's a certification sticker there on the top. This was actually something that I found at the Goodwill a couple of years ago. You can see the date on the price tag there. I believe that is uh, 01-22-2013. And I see a lot of dehumidifiers show up at the Goodwill, but unfortunately, many of them arrive there because the refrigerant has leaked out of them. So I saw this one there, and my enthusiasm was mounting, but I had to keep it in check because I just wasn't sure it was going to work. And at $20 a pop, well, I wanted to make sure that it was going to work properly. So I plugged it in in the store. It seemed to be cooling down nicely like it ought to. So I thought it was probably worth the chance. I was traveling with the key keeper that evening and we loaded it up in the trunk of his Mercury Grand Marquis, took it home, and it's been working here in the laundry room ever since. There's really only two bad things that I can think of to say about this particular design. And the first one is right here. You have this little bit of capillary tubing that's part of the refrigeration system. And as you can see, it stands a little bit proud of the cabinet on this particular unit and I could see that becoming an accident victim in a very unfortunate way that would let all the refrigerant out. We do have some spider webs on the back. I need to clean this thing. This water bucket is a very interesting design, very unique design. Okay, I'm back. I had a little interruption there. My dad was walking around in the kitchen. He heard me filming down here. He was curious as to what I was doing. So where was I? Oh yes, the water bucket. The water bucket on this unit is an interesting design, and there are things that I like and hate about it along the way. One of the things I do like about it, when it's not absolutely full to the brim, it's possible to remove it from this unit without uh, bouncing the power to the compressor, that is to say short cycling it and causing the compressor to go into protection, which while I've never lost one that way, I can't imagine is necessarily nice to it. But when this thing does get full, 
and this little foam float rises up, which is an approach I definitely like better than the plastic peg many units have a foam float attached to, because sometimes that foam will actually get free, and then the unit will cover your floor in water when it overflows, or it won't shut off until after it has overflowed. I like this because it seems a lot sturdier, seems a lot less likely to come off of there, although again you can see the foam is not really terribly tightly attached to this, it's not terribly secure, but it is actually pretty tight. I can't just turn it by hand. With this out of the way, we can actually take a look at the information plate on the back of the unit, and judging by the serial number on this unit, which starts with the digits 9413, and then ends with 134599. There's a sticker down here with that same number on it, or pretty much that same number on it. Not looking at it very carefully here on the video. I believe this unit was manufactured in the 13th week of 1994, so it's just a little past, what, it's 21st birthday? It looks like it was kept in pretty good care, in pretty good uh, maintenance by its previous owner, but we're going to pop the cover here in a little bit because, like I say, I've been using this unit for about the past two years now, and it's probably about time to see if anything like the fan motor needs to be lubricated, has provisions for lubrication. I'm also curious about the manufacturer of the refrigeration compressor on this unit. This is new enough that it's using refrigerant 500, charged to 7.5 ounces, Claims a horsepower rating, although it's not clear whether or not it's for the compressor or the blower fan. I would guess the compressor of one-fifth runs on 115 volts AC, 60 cycles per second, as is the norm here in the United States. Pulls a total of 4.7 amps. Capacity of 30 pints in 24 hours. Runs on one phase. They didn't stamp anything up here in the total watts field, but that's not very uncommon. We have a design pressure probably on the high side of 285 PSI. And there you can see information about EBCO Oasis's dehumidifier department, 265 North Hamilton Road in Columbus, Ohio, USA. And then looking up here, you can see there's a place to attach a hose if you wanted to have this unit drain directly into something like a floor drain or anything that was at a lower level than it was. And up here you can actually see the trigger mechanism for the compressor and fan shutoff when this unit fills up. When that float rises up, it's going to behave just like my finger does right now. And i got to figure this out. <laughs> okay, it pushes up on it. It has to push up on it. And then that in turn causes the unit to shut off. You can see the condenser coil inside there. And then you can see the evaporator coil on this side. And that brings me to the next feature in this particular video. Popping the cover of this unit, having a look inside. But first, we want to be very careful. Safety first. Make sure it's unplugged. And also that I actually brought my screwdriver in here, which is looking like... Oh, nope. Wait. It is in my pocket. Let that be a lesson to you folks. Don't get old. Because aging is all in the mind. And the mind is the first thing that goes. I expect that removing the cover from this thing is going to be pretty simple and straightforward. A screw here, two down here, and then over on the other side, much the same thing once again. Here, we'll, Here's one at the back of the cabinet, and then here are two at the bottom. And again, this thing looks to be in exceptional condition for its age. Even this full light, if I can trip it here, still works perfectly. These are little neon lights, and sometimes after a number of years and a fair bit of mileage, they get to flickering after a while. I don't really know why that is, if it's just that the neon gas slowly leaks out of the tube, or if it wears out, or if the filaments inside the tube end up sputtering on themselves or otherwise contaminating themselves and becoming unable to work at proper efficiency. So, time to pull the cover. I'll be right back. Okay, it turns out disassembly was not quite as straightforward as expected. There are actually two, no, there are three screws here holding the front grill on the unit. And as the metal cover has tabs that are slotted into the front grill, you have to remove these two. A little bit tricky to do this without tilting the unit backwards, but I've got it sitting slightly proud of the table here. And it looks like that's enough to let me go ahead and get at those screws without risking the unit falling on the floor. And just as a little bit of anticipation, you can see the compressor in there. I'm going to guess Matsushita Electric, 
Although the warning sticker on the side of it makes me think possibly Tecumseh. There's the blower fan in there. That fan motor actually looks very familiar. I have a 1970s something Montgomery Ward signature dehumidifier that would be in perfect working order these days were it not for the fact that after oh, 40 plus years of reliable service, the humidistat in it finally let go. That is a Morrill or maybe Merrill electric motor. I believe those are made in Tennessee. But it looks identical to the one, even though this thing's about 20 years, uh, 20 years newer than the Montgomery Ward model. That motor looks identical. Does look like it's intended to be oiled. But we'll find out more just as soon as I get the front cover off. They did a nice job of tying the power leads up in there though. All the wiring looks to be routed very cleanly. Certainly wouldn't find that in a modern China Pride unit before or after it caught on fire. I got the front plate off of the unit now and there are two more screws holding it on. Another sign that this thing was definitely not built to the absolute cheapest price imaginable. And there we are. I've got the cover taken off and all of the unit's internal workings are exposed. The first thing that we have is a safety warning telling us of the electric shock hazard presented by potentially working on this unit with the power cord attached. I'm good there. It also says do not cut or otherwise open any underlined tubing, condenser coil, cooling coil, compressor shell, or other parts of the refrigeration system because they contain oil and refrigerant under pressure. This unit should be serviced only by properly qualified service personnel. Some sort of a manufacturing code on the sticker. There's the simple neon lamp that indicates when the unit's full. And of course a simple mechanical humidistat. That little piece of plastic film that you see run along the top there is actually the method by which this thing determines the humidity in the air. That plastic will expand and contract depending upon how much humidity there is in the air and that in turn actuates a spring-loaded switch. Down here we have the compressor. Very small model but entirely adequate. Manufactured by Matsushita Electrical Industry Company Limited, what we know today as Panasonic Corporation, made in Singapore. And then we have a warning over here about working on the unit safely. This is a permanently sealed system as most of them are. Everything is welded together and you can see where they filled it with this little tube right here that goes off to nowhere in particular. You can see that they soldered this shut so that it wouldn't leak after being filled. I would imagine that's actually something of an art form to do that without this leaking, but they must have very talented people or a very talented machine, either one, working on it. Connection to safety ground. And of course my incredibly weird sense of humor comes out to play once again. More refrigerant lines. This one's insulated. Going back here to the evaporator coils of which there are two ranks. Not at all uncommon. This tape has unfortunately degraded. But there's the condenser coil. The thing about this, it's just such a nice design. There's really nothing here that doesn't need to be. And don't get me wrong, I can certainly appreciate the niceties of, say, humidity, temperature level displays, percentage of the water bucket that's filled up, all that kind of stuff, but it's really hard to argue with something like this that just does the job it's asked to do reliably and with elegant simplicity. Just a beautiful thing, and unfortunately, one that I don't think we're going to see done again. I just don't think you could have a dehumidifier manufactured to this level of quality in today's cheaper, cheaper, cheaper world. And the sad thing is, modern dehumidifiers are not cheap. You see the two ranks of evaporator coils, nice and clean, not corroded. This thing's really surprisingly free of dust outside of the top of the compressor. There's a date stamp, 18 February 1994. So another clue as to approximately when it was manufactured. Here's the fan motor. Can't really see the maker name on it. And I don't really feel like going so far as to pull that out. I don't see any oil fill holes on this motor. I'd be very surprised if it didn't have any. But you can see it's designed to be mounted in a variety of different situations. Obviously, they designed this motor's casing to be extremely flexible as to how it could be placed in a finished product. You have screw holes back here. You have two on, you have four on the bottom. These might be some on the back. I'm not sure. They don't appear to be threaded, so they might not be. 
you have some up here that are actually used on this model and then when you get to the top of it you have another set of four that could be mounted to a plate of some kind and even though I would like to oil the bearings on this motor they appear to be in most excellent trim look at how long it takes that motor to spin down and that's just with a flick of my finger didn't even get it anywhere near to its operating speed speaking of its operating speed I'll go ahead and throw this unit back together and we'll have a startup sound demonstration for you next and there everything is put back together again I found something on the floor that fell out of this unit a long time ago before I even had it apart the first time I expect the glue that was holding this into place simply failed and at some point I will definitely put it into place once again we have a schematic here showing how the unit is wired again an impressive case of good design and elegant simplicity that will no doubt operate incredibly reliably for many years to come I feel kind of bad for the people who have traded this thing in, especially if they bought a brand new unit, because my guess is that it will not last even half, maybe even a sixth of the time that this one has, and this one's still going today. Whereas if they bought one to replace it that was much more modern, under the guise of allegedly saving energy, which, as you know, I think is a whole bunch of malarkey, well, I dare say that it might not still be running to this very day. Speaking of running, before I go ahead and wrap this video up, I promised a start and run demonstration of this unit so you can hear what it sounds like. So I'll have that coming right up. And for those of you who are wondering why this is wet, well, since I happen to have it off of there anyway, I decided to take it over to the laundry tub and treat it to a quick spray down with water just to get some of the dust and grime off of the front of it. Thank you for watching, and as always, feel free to leave a comment if you happen to have one.